guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. This is Cooking with Evie and my name is Yvette. And if you didn't know, I like to make videos of grocery hauls, cooking videos, and other miscellaneous items. Today, I'm going to be cooking a very typical and popular Puerto Rican dish. It's arroz con andules, which in English could be translated to rice with pigeon peas. It is a very famous Puerto Rican dish, typically cooked at things like parties, holidays, all of that, you cannot go without having a good old Puerto Rican arroz con andules. I will be doing things a little differently than most Puerto Ricans. A lot of Puerto Ricans like to put ham in their arroz con andules, but I do not eat pork, so I will be omitting that. Anywho, I'm gonna start off by showing you what you need. You're obviously gonna wanna have a caldero, like a pot. I would recommend if you're gonna make some to have one about this size. This is actually kind of small compared to what most people use, but this is the biggest one that I have. Homemade sofrito. I have a video on how to make sofrito. If you're interested, I will link it up in the cards there. I only have a little bit today, so we're gonna go ahead and use that up. We would also want some tomato sauce. I have it in this leftover jar, but the tomato sauce that is here is Goya tomato sauce. I'll go ahead and show you a can uh, just so you can see what it looks like. Using this Goya tomato sauce, however, I'd already used one up half of a can. So I have the other half in this little container, uh, but this is what it looks like. I'm using my Goya here, but you can use any tomato sauce you like. My beautiful harvested fresh gandules. These are actually frozen from a month ago. I went to my parents' house and harvested these gandules. You should have seen those if you saw my gandule soup video. And then my beautiful coworker, she actually gave me some gandules. She gave me a lot of dried ones, but these were the fresh ones that I could harvest. So I'm gonna combine these two to make my arroz con gandules, but you can definitely use a can of beans, no worries. Uh, you'll also want to have a red pepper. You can use canned red pepper, Goya sells some, Iberia sells some. They're just in a jar and it's red pepper, but since I have a whole bunch of red peppers that I bought at a farmer's distribution place, I wanna go ahead and use up the fresh, so I'm gonna cut this up. Some rice, typically most people use white rice. You probably could go with brown rice, but I will be using white rice today. And then this is a special trick that's um, a very beloved baker that I know taught me. She recommends to put a banana leaf on top of your pot to cook the arroz con andules. That gives it a very, very special plate, uh, a very, very special taste. I bought this uh, pack frozen from one of the Spanish supermarkets. It was like one or two dollars and it's lasted me a very, very long time. You just stick it in your freezer and I defrost it as needed and those banana leaves are large. Okay, now that we have chopped up our red pepper, I think essentially we are okay to get started on this. I did forget to mention one essential ingredient, which was olive oil, any oil that you want to use. You don't need that much, but today I'm gonna use first cold press extra virgin olive oil. I want some sasson for the color. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by turning on the stove to about a medium high, more so on the high side. I've got my tablespoon here. I'm gonna add one and two tablespoons of sofrito. Honestly, there's not very much left though, so I'm just gonna add all of it, but you are okay with two tablespoons of sofrito. You can add more if you like, but that, that should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and take half a packet of sasson. Best advice that I can give you in terms of how much sasson to use is you want to look at your sofrito when you, I like to stir it in there. When you stir it in there, if it's still green, then I say you need more. It's going to smell delicious, so I'm going to throw a little more in there. And there's about a half packet, give or take, left. So I'm going to mix this. Now you see how it's changing color more or less? This is a pretty good indicator. If you wanted to add more, you definitely could, um, but if you wanna leave it at that, that's a pretty good color. And because it's starting to smoke up, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil so this doesn't burn. So I would say like maybe two or three tablespoons of olive oil or whatever oil of your choice. Once it starts kind of sizzling quite a bit, you wanna go ahead and add your tomato sauce. All right, so now that it's going quite a bit, I am gonna go ahead and throw in my tomato sauce. Let me grab my spoon here and scoop out all of this. Again, this is half of a can of that Goya tomato sauce. And then you just stir that up. 
So now it's kind of a crucial moment for us to add our water. Three cups of water and just throw that in. Now that it's been sizzling for a little bit, I'm gonna throw that in. Since we have three cups of water there and some of that sofrito in there, I'm gonna go in with three cups of rice and I'm just throwing it in here to my mesh strainer because I'm gonna go ahead and wash it. Right, so while we are waiting for that to bubble up, we are gonna add our flavor to this. And I am gonna start off by using just some basic spices here. I'm gonna show you them as I throw them in there. Start off with some onion salt. This is from the McCormick brand. And just throw some of that in there. Throw in this Goya adobo, light adobo, without pepper. Throw some of that in there. And then on um, my lovely garlic salt, it is from the body of brand, but it does not have parsley. I'm just reusing the container. And the garlic salt. Here you could leave this just as is, but sometimes I like to give it a special touch and add some sort of bouillon flavor. I'm gonna add some chicken. Uh, however, uh, if you are vegan vegetarian exclusively, you can definitely add a veggie bouillon cube. And I might try that next time, but today I'm feeling like chicken, so I'm gonna use this Cosome de Pollo from the Maller brand. And I'm just gonna throw ahead, go ahead and throw like one and a half tablespoons of this seasoning, stir that in there. Okay, now is also a good time for us to throw in our uh, peppers and obviously the pigeon peas. I can't believe I forgot that. Ideally, you wouldn't want to throw them in there with the sofrito going, but honestly, it's fine the order that you throw them in there. So I'm throwing in that little bag and then the frozen ones that I had. So here we are. And y'all, cooking is about learning. It's looking more so like it needs to look. And this next ingredient is optional. You do not have to use it, but I love it in my arroz con andules. This is the way I always grew up, so we're going to do it. I am using some olives, and this is actually a special type. It's alcaparrado, which has capers, pimentos, and olives that are pitted. This is reduced sodium, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a few tablespoons of that in there. Two and a half tablespoons of olives. And you definitely wanna throw it in with the brine. The brine actually gives it a nice flavor. So, anywho, we're gonna stir this up and Come back to it in a few minutes. You wanna wait until this is boiling and I went ahead and tasted it just to see kinda how it's doing in terms of flavor. It is a little salty, um, but it, it should be fine once we fully cook it. However, just as a precaution, I'm gonna throw in about half a cup more of water. Here is my half cup and I'm gonna throw that in there just to make sure we don't over salt it. Because remember, the olives have salt, and if you use the jarred red peppers, those are going to have sodium in them as well. Uh, I recommend though, if you do use the jarred stuff, throw it in there with brine and all. That way you don't need to use that much salt. But just because I like to make sure things are not too, too salty for us, I did go ahead and throw in that extra water. We wanna let this boil and then we wanna throw our rice in. Okay, y'all, so hubby's already hungry. Um, this is the hard part of filming. It does take a little bit more time to set up and get things going. But anywho, the water is now boiling, so this is a great point for you to throw your rice in. So I've already washed this, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there. This was three cups of rice, and because it's now getting a little bit harder to handle, I am gonna go in with my bigger spoon here and start stirring it up. So let it go a little bit and let the water get consumed because it may be just right. When I was learning to cook, my sister and I would cook together and I always made her do the rice and I would do other things like the meat and the beans. So I got my bean and meat making skills down and I suck at rice. She honestly is a lot better than I am because she was always the one to do the rice on the pot. So give it a quick stir every now and again to make sure things don't get stuck to the bottom, but kind of just let it boil a little bit. Just a tip, you wanna be sure to be checking it for flavor as you go because you don't want it to be overly salty. But keep in mind when you're just tasting the broth, you need to be a little bit saltier than you might think 
just because the rice is gonna absorb a lot of that flavor. If the broth is not a little bit salty, it may end up tasting bland. So you will notice as the minutes go by that it starts to absorb and the broth begins to get thicker. And once it's pretty much mostly absorbed, you want to turn your heat down. So mine is almost at that point. I'm gonna let it go just a little bit more before I turn this down. Last quick stir, and it's looking pretty absorbed. So I am going to turn this down because this is actually the consistency at which you want this to start simmering. So you turn it down to a low heat, probably a one or a two if your stove is numbered like mine. And you wanna give it just one nice quick last couple of stirs, but it's an old trick. So if the spoon stands, it's great on texture. So you see how it's standing? This is an old trick to see whether or not the fact that it's standing right now tells us that it's good. And before we cover this, we will want to cover it with the banana leaves. This is where they come in. I'm gonna unravel it and get one banana leaf to cover that up. And like I said, these banana leaves are huge, so this is pretty good enough, so pretty small piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it just like that but I'm gonna tear off another piece to put over it. This is a piece that's good enough, so I'm gonna tear it and put it over. Now that it's nice and covered, we will go ahead and put the lid on there and check it about every 10 or so minutes. You don't wanna check it much more than that because then it will get, in Spanish you say like ahumado, like it will just ruin the texture. So you don't wanna check on it too much but you do wanna stir it occasionally to make sure it cooks evenly. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna check it for the very first time. The moisture that leaks from there, you want to pour it back into. To the rice, you remove the banana leaves, and this is what it's looking like after 10 minutes of being on a low simmer. It's looking really nice in my opinion, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice stir. Down. And it smells really good. Honestly, the banana leaves make all the difference. It's surprising, but it really does make all of the difference. Pepper also makes the biggest difference, like you'd be surprised. So I'm gonna put the leaves back on there, cover it once more, and I will check it about, after about 10 more minutes. Okay, so it's been about another 10 minutes, so I'm gonna give this a quick check, remove the leaves, and again, pour out the remainder of the liquid. This is looking pretty good. I would say it's almost done, but I would give it a few more minutes just to make sure it fully cooks through. I would and cover that up one last time, and I think the next time we check it, it will pretty much be done. Okay, so this is the last check. It has been about 30 minutes total. I'm going to remove the banana leaves and put the rest of the moisture from the lid on there and give it one last stir. I would say that this is definitely done. Guys, what can I tell you? I'm so excited. Now I have two different ways to eat gandules up on my channel. They were both freshly harvested from both my mother's garden and my coworker's garden. I am so excited about this. I think it's gonna taste very delicious. We are gonna pair it with some fresh cucumber salad dressed simply with two limes and some pink Himalayan salt. We've also got some corn roasted on the grill and then some grilled chicken, uh, some grilled uh, plantains, sweet plantains. I don't even know what else we're gonna pair this with, but honestly, you could eat this with, if you wanted to have it just completely vegetarian, which I might do tomorrow, you will want to just put the rice and then some salad on the side and then just a nice couple slices of tomatoes. You can have it with meat, whatever you want. Give this a try. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you'd like me to make anything else next or what you want to see on this channel. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching. This is a shot of the dish. If you wanted to eat it vegetarian, you could load it up with more salad or different things. I will try to get another clip with the full plate, but if not, I hope you guys enjoy this. So this is my plate, got a sweet potato, half of a sweet plantain, the cucumber salad and the rice that you already saw, some chicken. It's looking good, y'all.